With digitization and the growth of online platforms, including search engines and social media sites, debate continues around the existence of filter bubbles and echo chambers, and what impact, if any, do they have on the formation of political and social ideologies? Furthermore, if people select information conforming to their existing worldview, do filter bubbles and echo chambers amplify and reinforce individual ideologies by refining media exposure to material which only follows their preferred point of view? Scholars such as Sunstein argue that filter bubbles and echo chambers limit the diversity of content people see, and in turn, limit factors essential in democratic society, such as open-mindedness and ideological discussion. Conversely, Research exists which questions the true effect of filter bubbles and echo chambers and argues that while factors exist, their influence in the development of social and political views is maybe overstated. This presentation will look at both sides of this argument and demonstrate that while filter bubbles and echo chambers may exist, research suggests that due to factors such as personal agency and limitations around algorithm technology, the effect of filter bubbles and echo chambers in the formation and reinforcement of our social and political ideologies is perhaps overstated. An important first step in order to better understand both sides of this debate is to define what filter bubbles and echo chambers are. According to Bruns, not only have these terms been poorly defined by Cass Sunstein and Elaine Pariser, who established the terms echo chambers and filter bubbles respectively, they've also been poorly defined by the media, political commentators, and academics. To provide clarity around these terms, this presentation uses the definitions used by Bruns in his 2019 book, Are Filter Bubbles Real? In this book, he states that, an echo chamber comes into being when a group of participants choose to preferentially connect with each other to the exclusion of outsiders. The more fully formed this network is, that is, the more connections are created within the group and the more connections with outsiders are severed, the more isolated from the introduction of outside views is the group, while the views of its members are able to be circulated widely within it. An example of this is a series of Facebook profiles which only follow each other and have no other links to outside influences. In this case, information is shared only within the group and not with outsiders, allowing for that information and those beliefs to be amplified by like-minded people within the discussions in the group. A filter bubble emerges when a group of participants, independent of the underlying network structures of their connections with others, choose to preferentially communicate with each other to the exclusion of outsiders. The more consistently they exercise this choice, the more likely it is that participants' own views and information will circulate amongst group members rather than any information introduced from the outside. So in this example, if you take the same accounts from the example of echo chambers, these users are now networked across a wider range of accounts. However, they're still only choosing to respond to, comment on, share, mention and like information that originates from other group members. So in the same way, they are discounting alternative points of view by only focusing on the information presented to them that correlates with their particular point of view. For Sunstein, Pariser and other commentators supporting the argument that filter bubbles and echo chambers have a negative impact on how people form social and political ideologies, a central concern is the threat these concepts have on a well-functioning democracy. For this group, exposure to alternate, unplanned and unanticipated encounters rather than personalised, ideologically similar content forms an essential part of a well-functioning democracy. Personalisation by pre-selection, so that's where personalisation is driven by algorithms on things such as websites, through advertisers or similar actors, usually without the user's deliberate choice, input, knowledge or consent or personalization through a person self-selection. So this is where personalization in which people choose to encounter like-minded opinions exclusively, bring individuals together into homogenous networks in which to share ideologically agreeable news and information. These homogenous networks boost the likelihood of individuals accepting ideologically compatible news and ideas, reduce trust in alternative views, increase the closure of individuals to new information or alternative points of view, reduce critical thinking and amplify polarization, which can potentially lead to the acceptance of more extreme political and social points of view. This can have flow on effects into areas such as policy formation, in which policymakers are compelled to act in response to the popular public discourse. Religious extremism, Brexit, the election of Donald Trump, 
and unexpected wins for populist causes and candidates around the world have all been attributed to filter bubbles and echo chambers by those who support the negative impact thesis. However, research conducted by Pew Research found 41% of US-based social media users surveyed actually don't have strong feelings of the amount of political content they see on social media. Those questioning the echo chamber and filter bubble argument, such as Bruins, suggest these arguments place too high an emphasis on individual political interests, and they disregard key factors such as human agency. They also overemphasize the capacity of existing personalization algorithms in isolating what users actually see and interact with online. There is a general consensus amongst those opposing the filter bubble and echo chamber thesis, including O'Hara and Stevens, Flaxman, Gohl and Rao, and Dubious and Blank, that filter bubbles and echo chambers actually exist. However, this group believes that the influence of these concepts on the formation of social and political points of view is actually overstated. Dubious and Blank suggest that research completed by those studying the echo chamber and filter bubble thesis places too great a focus on personal interactions with one, maybe two social media platforms, with these platforms typically Facebook and Twitter. There is also a lack of research on the role of messaging apps such as WhatsApp, Viber and Facebook Messenger in the dissemination of false or misleading information, which is important as studies by organisations such as Pew Research Centre indicate that more people are starting to use these as ways to network with like-minded people. Studies supporting the echo chamber and filter bubble thesis also refrain from considering the impact of external factors such as existing media diets, the complexity of the modern media landscape, and how individuals interact with the media and with their social networks, both online and offline. Those opposing the filter bubble and echo chamber thesis argue that there is no empirical evidence to support their alleged negative impact. Rather, people retain their own agency when making decisions about how they search, connect, and engage with others on a specific issue or topic. Traditionally, People act as their own gatekeepers, referring to their preferred sources to form ideological points of view and to vet the information that's been presented to them online. Even if users personalise their media content through self-selection, evidence presented by Flaxman, Gohl and Rao suggests that these individuals will access mainstream media sites which traditionally hold more centralist viewpoints rather than those at the extreme ends of the political spectrum, including things such as Breitbart. The personalization on online content can provide people with greater autonomy over their news consumption choices. According to Bruins, this level of personalization gives people the opportunity to access information on the topics that interest them and to follow the news at a level of detail and complexity that suits their level of information literacy. Even users with smaller media diets have social connections which protect them from being fully emerged in an echo chamber or filter bubble. Research conducted by O'Hara and Stevens and Dewey and Blank suggests that rather than being limited to one homogenous network, people tend to interact with others across a range of different online and offline networks. Even if these people have connections which would traditionally fall in line with their social and political beliefs, it is unlikely that these connections would all hold exactly the same ideological viewpoints all of the time. These connections protect users from filter bubbles and echo chambers by increasing a person's exposure to different and diverse points of view. The other area of concern for supporters of the filter bubble and echo chamber debate is pre-selection personalization. Unlike self-selection personalization, where the user selects the content based on their own worldviews and interests, pre-selection personalization occurs when an algorithm selects content on behalf of the user. According to Nesha Stoll and Lewis, algorithms have become a definitive element of today's media technologies, and algorithmic gatekeepers have been a key feature of digital journalism. They allow for people to navigate large volumes of online content quickly and easily, and are becoming more predominant than editors in selecting the news people see online. According to Newman in research conducted on behalf of the University of Oxford and the Reuters Institute, more than half of users globally surveyed prefer algorithmic forms of news presentation, that is, news presented via search engines or social media compared to those handled by journalists via news websites or through traditional forms of media. This preference is stronger in younger generations and people who are more likely to use their smartphone to access news. 
However, in the same research, younger generations still demonstrated a respect for traditional news brands, thanks to outside influences such as parental influences and teacher influences. But this group still opts to directly access information across multiple news outlets in order to vet the information that they see online. Even with algorithmic forms of news growing in popularity, research conducted by Bruns and Bourgeois suggests that there's actually no empirical evidence to support the argument that algorithms contribute to filter bubbles and echo chambers. Furthermore, the use of algorithms is quite opaque and the way that they're applied is uncertain. So more information on how they actually operate and work to tailor content would be needed in order to come to a more definitive conclusion on their influence on creating filter bubbles and echo chambers for website users and how that information would then be used to form ideological and social points of view. So, this presentation has looked at a debate around the existence of filter bubbles and echo chambers and what impact, if any, do they have on the formation of political and social ideologies. The concern for those supporting the filter bubble and echo chamber thesis is that by limiting the content to one's point of view, these concepts limit factors which are essential to democratic society, such as exposure to alternate points of view or unplanned and unanticipated encounters. Arguments favouring the existence of filter bubbles and echo chambers discount the role other factors, such as individual agency, play in the decision making and opinion forming process. Instead, these arguments rely on technological factors such as search engine and social media algorithms to demonstrate the presence and effect of filter bubbles and echo chambers. However, the way these algorithms work to personalize content is unclear, and even with people relying on them to streamline what media they see, there are other factors such as social agency or even interpersonal relationships which help users avoid echo chambers and filter bubbles themselves. This shows that while elements of echo chambers and filter bubbles may exist to a point, their impacts are actually more overstated than the reality.